Now drop and give me 50. 47, 48, 49, 50. Ugh. You know, exercise is good. Maybe some of you take an early morning or late evening walk. Maybe you ride your bicycle. But the whole idea is to exercise, right? You want to get your heart rate up, exercise your muscles and so forth. But let me ask you a question. How many of you think about exercising your RV regularly? We're going to talk about that Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. What do I mean by exercising your RV? Well, we're going to talk about how we exercise ours. There's an old saying, you either use it or you lose it. And when it applies to your motorhome, nothing could be more applicable than here. Joni and I, like I know many of you have, you drive by some of these storage lots or an RV lot or whatever, and you see these same motorhomes parked there month after month, month after month. And in my opinion, those motorhomes are dying a slow death and slow motion. Motor homes need to be run. And the more you run them, the healthier they are. One of the biggest flags that Martin gets is when, when you're shopping for a used RV, you may be looking for an earlier year, right? You're trying to save some money, what have you. So you're looking for a used coach. And when you get down to, you, you know, like 2007, 2008, 2010, and that coach has only got, let's say, 12,000 miles on it, 15,000 miles. What that tells me is, is that coach has not been driven very much. And that's scary to me. So just think about it. Take the year that you're looking at a coach and look at the mileage that it has put on it, to date and divide that up into the average amount of miles that puts on a year. If it's not many miles, that means that coach has not been driven very much, and that really bothers me. Now, it wouldn't be a deal killer. I certainly would be going over that coach with a fine-tooth comb. Now, for full-timers, nomads like Joni and I and many of you, you are driving all the time. You're moving around. And so your coach is getting exercised on a regular basis, and that's good. But many of you are not full-timers, or you are a full-timer, and you find a nice spot you like to stay at, and you park there, and you end up staying there two months, three months, four months, whatever. That's not good for your coach. So most full-timers, like Joni and I, and again, I'll say most of you, will put on about five, maybe 10,000 miles a year. That's roughly the average, about 10,000 a year. And why do I say that? Well, think about it. Our routine and your routine, for the most part, is we'll drive somewhere, two, three, four hundred miles, six hundred miles, whatever. You'll park and you'll stay there for a couple of weeks, explore. Then you'll get back in the coach and you'll drive to another destination. Sit a couple of weeks, explore, drive on again. You're always on the move somewhat. So traveling nomads who are constantly moving are always exercising their coach. And that's a good thing. But I want to give you an example of Joni and I. Now, as you know, we came up here to Maine for the summer. And we arrived in June. We're leaving in September. So we get here to our destination and we get all set up. We get our awnings out, our water all set up, our lawn furniture. We're settled in. Our tire covers are on. Our water softener hooked up. When you get in those kind of situations, it's very easy to say, you know, gosh, I know I should go exercise the coach, but I don't want to break down everything 
and have to take this baby out. But you know, it's an important thing to do. It's just like what I showed you in the very beginning of this video, where I was exercising and doing push-ups, or maybe you, you ride your bike or whatever. It's a discipline. It's something that you make yourself do, whether you want to do it or not, because overall, exercising your coach is good for your coach. So we've been here for a few weeks, and it's time to take our coach out to be exercised. So we're gonna break everything down. We're gonna take our coach out for a drive. We're gonna go about 60 miles or so. And along the way, I'm gonna discuss a few things. And then when we get back, we'll cover some more details. So my tires are cold, as they should be. And the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on my TPMS. Now, I went into how important the TPMS system is in part two of my crucial high priority stuff that every RVer should have. If you have not seen that video or that series, at least go to part two where I cover in detail the TPMS. So I've turned on my TPMS and you can see right here that I'm showing 85 PSI and I run that on all six tires. So we're good to go there. That's why I love this TPMS system. I don't have to go out there and check my air pressure with, you know, manually by a gauge or all that. I just turn on my switch. It tells me right there where I'm at. While we're exercising the coach, and I underline that word coach, that means I want to exercise everything. So the next thing I'm going to do is start the generator and I'm going to turn on both AC units because I want to exercise those too. I want to put a load on that generator so it'll get exercised properly. So let's finish closing up this baby and let's get going. As I said in the beginning of this video, exercising is good for your heart, it's good for your muscles, it's good for all that stuff in your body. And that's why we're taking the coach out. We wanna exercise every function of the coach. We wanna get all of our fluids up to temp. We wanna get our tires rolling and up to temp. All of us should be running the proper PSI according to your weight and running them often and getting them up to temp. Those two things alone will make your tires healthier and last longer. I see people ask this question all the time online. How often should I change my tires? I hear it's supposed to be these many years or that many years and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of different parts and components that contribute to the length and healthiness of your tires. Running them often, getting them up to temp, and running them with the right PSI are two major components. So as I'm going down the freeway, I'm constantly glancing down at my scan gauge too. It is precisely telling me all the time what is going on with the coach. As you can see here, the top left number is telling me what my radiator is running, my coolant temperature. And off to the far right, it's showing me how many volts that I'm charging. On the bottom left, it is showing my miles per gallon. Now, since we've just gotten on the road, we haven't been driving very far, so it doesn't have enough data to really precisely give me that number right now. It takes about an hour for scan gauge two to take a reading over a period of time to be able to give you an accurate reading. But for those of you who wanna know, uh, over thousands and thousands of miles and wide range of terrain, we get 7.3 miles per gallon. We are always towing and we are always in tow haul mode. And on the very bottom right hand 
corner, those numbers, that's the temperature of the fluid in my transmission. Man, it feels good to have her out. Give this girl a run. Now, I, I'll tell you, I just love this scan gauge too. Uh, it's totally programmable. Uh, you, can, you can put up on display anything you want to see. When you buy the scan gauge too, uh, it comes with a set of what you call what they call X gauges. Okay, so once you get your unit, you go online and you find the X gauges for the different things that you want to monitor. You put those codes into the scan gauge, and the scan gauge too is so easy to uh, install. I mean, you literally stick it to the dashboard, run the cable up underneath the dash, and plug it right into your OBD2 port, and that's it. You turn it on. So these four things that I just showed you, the water temp, the voltage, the miles per gallon, and the uh, transmission fluid temperature, those are the four things I always want to be watching. Now, if I hit the menu button, I can start scrolling to other things. But I just thought that maybe some of you would like to know kind of how that works. Okay, so we just got through taking our coach for her exercise. And again, I wanted to show you how easy it is to hook up my water. So here are the two hoses that go to the water softener. I just put these two hoses right through there like that. I disconnect them here with my awesome quick disconnects. I just love these things. Snap one on there. Snap one on there. I take my hose, my main supply water hose. I go up through the bottom there and snap it onto there. And there you go. I mean, it just don't get any easier than that. Okay, we're back and all set up. Now, I've got some other really important points I want to cover. Okay, before we get onto those important points, I just wanted to remind some of you, especially if you're new, if you would like to see all of the upgrades, maintenance, and how-to DIYs I've done, go to our main YouTube channel page, click Playlist, and when you get to the Playlist page, click RV Upgrades, Maintenance, and How-To DIYs. Scroll down there, there's a whole list of them there. Okay, let's just think about what we just did. I had to actually write these things down because I know I'll forget them. <laughs> But we just exercised the coach. We exercised the slides, the leveling jacks, the generator and the AC units, our brakes, the entire suspension system, our fuel system, including the fuel pump. We charged all the batteries. We got all the fluids, all the fluids, up to proper temp. The entire drivetrain got exercised. The ignition system. I even ran the dash heater. And most importantly to Martin, and out of all these things, is the tires got ran. They got up to temp. Let's look at my TPMS when we got back. You can see my TPMS right here. Remember, we started out at 85 PSI all the way around, remember? But now that we're back, we're up to 93 to 95 PSI and that's totally normal. That's why you always set your PSI to proper cold pressure to start with and inflate your tires according to your tire manufacturer's inflation charts. They factor in this warming up in their charts. Getting your tires up to proper temp frequently is an important factor to keeping your tires healthy and helping them last a long time. And as much as these things cost, it's a good thing to do. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this already, but I know when you get settled into a place, it's hard to pick everything up and go exercise your coach. But I'm trying to encourage you. It's a good thing to do. We've paid a lot of money for these things. You pay a lot of insurance and camping fees and tires. Taking it for a 50, 60 mile drive once a month, to ensure it stays healthy is not a lot to ask. If you're interested in the TPMS or the Scan Gauge 2 that I use, I'll put links down below just in case you're interested. 
right underneath this video you'll see show more click that scroll down i'll have them right there i'll tell you you should at least have a tpms i mean i just think that's just one of the most important things that every coach should have so anyway guys if you liked this video give me a like and if you got some good comments add them in there it's good for the conversation for everybody to learn and if you haven't subscribed already please consider subscribing and ring the bell off to the right so you'll be notified the next time we upload our next free video these are free guys so anyway that's it for now until next time this is rv street stick around <music>